All right, so next challenge. The next challenge is, oh, it's a binary exploitation. Okay, okay. So binary exploitation, um, explaining the concept of binary exploitation is gonna take a while, uh, but I'll try to make this, uh, make this as quick as I can. So we can go to this um, binary exploitation challenge right here with 50 points called format string zero. Okay, so it's a, Format string zero is a binary exploitation challenge. It says, can you can you use your knowledge of format strings to make the customers happy? Download the binary here, download the source here. So additional details will be made after launching your challenge instance. Okay, so um, binary exploitation challenges are all about taking advantage of, um, of programming uh, security flaws. Sorry, um, executable program security flaws. Uh, we're going to need to download two files, both the um, both the binary file itself as well as well as the source code. So we can go to our web shell and get out of here. And we can go to it was format string zero. So we can make a directory for this uh, format string zero. Whoops. Okay, and then we can download the two files that we need to complete the challenge. So I will leave the link for both of those in the chat. Okay, and that's both of the both of the challenge files. If we take a look here, ah, I downloaded it. I downloaded it twice. Okay, let me delete that. Okay, so whenever we do one of these binary exploitation challenges, the first thing we need to do is we need to enable the execution of uh, of the file we just downloaded. So we can tell if a file has um, execution uh, permissions if there's an X inside of um, inside of this this row right here. So there's no X here, so we can't actually run the file. What we need to do inside of Linux is we need to run uh, chmod plus X and then the name of the file. So this is the name of the binary right here: chmod plus X format string zero. So run that, and now if we take a look at the file in the directory, so there's an X over here, which means that we can we can run the file now. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take a look at the, the C code provided to us inside of this .c file. So we can, let's do nano. So nano format string 0.c, and this is going to give us um, our text editor. So the, so the difficult part about binary exploitation is that it uh, requires us to understand a bunch of different concepts. Uh, it requires us to know about C programming. It requires us to know about, uh, about assembly language programming. And it also requires us to understand um, programming, so programming memory allocation. So the thing that we need to do inside of this challenge is we need to print out the flag. So in each one of these challenges, what we need to do to get is the flag. Uh, and it's usually a file called flag.txt. And inside of the code, it says, please create flag.txt in this directory with your own debugging flag. Okay, so let's let's do that real quick. So we'll exit out of here, and then we'll create a, a, a test flag. For the challenge. So we're going to do echo, we got the flag, and we're going to output that into a file called flag.txt. Now that we created the flag, we can go back to inspecting the, the source code. 
So remember, so the .c file here is the file that is used to create the, um, the executable binary file. So .c is the source file code, and without this .c, this one is the actual, the actual program that is created from the source code. So here we define a buffer size of 32 and we designate a flag size of 64. So what this, what this indicates right here is how much memory is allocated to each one of these, mem how much um, memory space is allocated to each one of these, uh, each one of these locations. So C is a relatively low level programming language compared to something like Python. And in C, you have to um, you have to allocate your your mem your program memory manually, uh, which is something that uh, that Python does automatically. Okay, so so we see here in this um, in this in this function right here, it's a sig seg v handler. So sig seg v is what happens when the program crashes. So uh, so this is um, so this is a this is a function that tells the program what to do if the program crashes. So in the event of a program crash, it's going to print it's going to print a string where the string is equal to the flag variable, and the flag variable is defined over here. So what we need to do to obtain the flag in this case is we need to crash the program. So we can crash the program by doing what is called a buffer overflow attack. A buffer overflow attack is basically when you feed when you feed um, too much information into um, into a user input that's not supposed to that's not supposed to contain um, more than X number of characters. So. So we can see here the buffer size when we uh, when we're trying to input something in the program is going to be 32. So if we feed into if we feed in our user in our user input if we feed more than 32 characters into this buffer over here this memory location it's going to the excess characters are going to overflow into other parts of the program. So other parts in the memory and that's probably going to cause a crash of the of the program. So we can we can test this hypothesis by exiting out and then executing the program format string zero. Okay, so we can run this. So here comes the first character, Patrick, who wants a giant bite. Choose from the following burgers. So this one, this one, or this one, but because we need to crash the program, we're going to feed a bunch of um, a bunch of information to this program uh, to crash it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send exactly 32 bytes, and then we're going to see what happens. So one, two. So that's 10. That's 20. And that's 30, and that's two. So this is 32 bytes, 32 characters. We're going to send this. In, we're going to send this input, and see if it crashes the program. It sh if it's only sending 32, it should fill the buffer, but it shouldn't overflow it. But because we're also sending the uh, the return, the new line character, the return key, it's going to be 33 bytes. Okay. So, or at least I thought it was going to be. Let's, uh, let's do that again. Okay, so let's send one more byte. Okay, so this should overflow the buffer. There's no sick burger yet. Okay, well, you know what? Let's just send a crap ton of, um, of input to the program. So we're gonna paste this over and over again and see if that crashes the program. Okay. So it says, we just sent a bunch of stuff over here, and it says there is no such burger yet, but it also crashed the program because we got the flag 
uh, we got the flag, we got the message, which is inside of the flag file. So if we cap our own flag.txt, it says we got the flag. Okay, so how do we solve this? Now that we know that this is going to overflow the buffer and then return the flag to us, how do we take advantage of this? We have to go back to the, um, to the challenge here. And we have to launch an instance. So this challenge launches, launches an instance on, on demand. So the, some of these challenges in Pico CTF also have virtual machines associated with them where you can send, uh, where you can send challenge data. This is one of those, this is one of those challenges. So we can click on launch instance and that's going to launch a, a virtual machine that we can send, that we can send info to. Okay. Now it says connect with the challenge instance here. And then it has um, a netcat command with a specific networking port. So we can copy that. Copy that, then go back to our web shell. And you can paste in the command here. It's going to be a different, uh, different port for everybody. And now we can, from here, this is the same program, only, it, only, it's, where it's, um, only it's running on a server. So if we know, all we need to do is uh, overwrite this buffer. We can just copy our previous output. Sorry, our previous input. So copy that. Whoops. We're going to copy that, and then we're going to paste it. And then we're going to send it. And then we get the flag here. The customer is never seg fault. We performed a buffer overflow attack, which is a, which is a form of binary exploitation, and we're able to retrieve the flag. So we copy the flag, go back to the web page, and we can submit that. We can submit this as the um, as the challenge flag. So submit it. Hey there, hacker frogs! Are you enjoying this workshop? Learning new concepts and skills? If so, there's a way you can support the channel. And it's totally free. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Also, click on the like button. And if you have questions or comments on this workshop, please leave them below the video. Thanks for listening. And now, back to our scheduled programming.